Hello everyone, this is Clint. Welcome to Sweetcast. I wanted to talk about the blacklist. Uh, It seems like everybody knows that there's a a blacklist (laughs) for comics. If you're involved with Comicsgate, if you associate uh, with people in Comicsgate, uh, even if you're just friendly, not even that, even if you just haven't disavowed uh, in a very public way Comicsgate, you're under scrutiny from really almost every publisher uh and it's it's near impossible for you to get published so i've been thinking about this because i'm trying to uh think about the future for my comic downcast Uh, i want to publish this book i'm I'm going to uh no matter what but i wanted to fill out my options now it doesn't matter that you know i feel like i'm a reasonable person uh it doesn't matter that uh you know i haven't don't call people names on Twitter. Uh, I don't write hit pieces on people. Uh, I don't, you know, I I don't know, do any kind of hateful activity, (laughs) I guess online. Uh, it doesn't matter, uh, because I agree with, uh, comics gate and, and I associate with people, uh, in comics gate. Therefore, uh, publishers won't look at me. Now the only existing publisher that I know of, uh, that has published comic skate creators is Antarctic press. Now, even with Antarctic, uh, if you all remember, of course you do, uh, jawbreakers was going to be published by Antarctic press, uh, which was, you know, your boy, your boy, Zach. Uh, and then that was just too much for people to handle. And so Mark Wade had to interfere. And, uh, then that left, Zach publishing his book on his on his own. He had to create his own publishing company. So when you're writing a comic, when you're trying to promote it, you're trying to do, you've got all these things that you need to do. Uh, publishing a comic is not easy, especially if you haven't done it before. There's just a lot of little details that a publisher can handle uh, because they've done it before. So I know that Antarctic Press has published uh, like at least rags that I know of they've officially done that and oh yeah punchline that's true that's another one uh, those have been associated with comics gate both of those books and looks like they've been published and the world didn't explode so I guess that's encouraging but it is really sad that knowing you know if I don't <laughs> but if I did want to submit a book to image comics even if they liked it even if I knew all the right people uh, even if whatever kind of connections I had, uh, I, I still could not get published because of Comicsgate. And this seems to be common knowledge. Everybody knows this, that there's a blacklist. Uh, I even wonder if, you know, someone like uh, Mike Miller, let's say Mike Miller wanted to go back to any publisher. He's a fantastic artist. Would they hire him back or is he blacklisted? No. I mean, of course they wouldn't. What about Ethan Van Skyver? Would they hire him back? I really don't think so. I would love to be proven wrong there, but it it seems to be common knowledge. Everybody knows that there's this blacklist uh, that evolves around Comicsgate, and a lot of it is because of all the just false information that's spread about Comicsgate. Now, if I Google Comicsgate blacklist, you know what I find? I find the exact opposite, especially from uh, places like Bleeding Cool, Uh, Like this article, far more liberal comic creators are blacklisted by Marvel and DC than conservative ones. Now, I think, I think part of the problem here, it's not so much like, sure, you could, what's that guy's name? Was it Chuck Wendig, the guy that was doing the Star Wars book and he got really inflamed over the Kavanaugh stuff, Kavanaugh hearing. And, uh, you know, he had to be nasty to people and he got let go. Now, I I wouldn't consider him blacklisted. I think he's going to be set aside for a little while. Uh, But in order for somebody that's very left wing to get blacklisted, they have to do something uh, really, really beyond the pill. And I'm not saying like just saying mean things to fans or anything like that. They really have to go out of their way to to be a nasty, horrible human being uh, to get blacklisted because of their politics. Right. It's not the same thing if you if you've got problems with meeting deadlines or if you've got problems with, you know, just communicating with people in general and, and being a decent human being. 
getting blacklisted for those things that has nothing to do with your politics uh so while there might be uh liberals that are blacklisted from comics i would argue it's not because that they're liberal uh it's because you know all the other a variety of things that they've done and part of the reason this is the case is because conservatives are stopped at the door they're stopped before they get into comic uh but just like everything else it seems like there's i don't know like they have to they have to make themselves the victim here this this is i heard this term is great so, social terrorism it's exactly what this is now alan moore is known to be a a very very left-leaning guy uh, and he says, I've shared this quote before in a past video. He says, it's always seemed to me that the majority of the comics field, if you had to place them politically, you'd have to say center right. Okay. Uh, now, depending on where you sit on the political spectrum, of course, things are going to look a little bit different. If you're more conservative, uh, everyone's going to look like they're to the left. If you're more liberal, everyone's going to look like they're to the right. But the truth is, if uh, if you're part of Comicsgate, which is a consumer revolt, and it's associated, I guess, with, I mean, not necessarily being conservative, but just being anti-social justice uh, in comics. And the, the whole social justice ideology is very extreme. It's very extreme left. You can't tell me that that's center right. It's It's not. So the fact that you disagree with this extremely radical ideology uh it makes you blacklisted uh but of course even the irony here this is a website called the comic regime <laughs> uh and it's a it, oh, it's a very anti-comics gate website uh but they have posted because comics gate i apparently i don't know when this happened probably before i jumped into things but there was a list of creators and yeah, creators here uh, that were people that you could boycott their books. And they're calling this a blacklist, okay? Uh, the thing is, if you look at these names on this list, these people are working in comics. It's not like they're blacklisted from comics. These are people that fans decided they didn't like, apparently. The group of fans that put this list together. This is not a blacklist. If you're still working in comics, but fans don't like you, you're not blacklisted. Uh, if you can't work in comics because no publisher will publish your book, no publisher will hire you uh, because you're associated with Comicsgate, that's a blacklist. But, you know, all the information you find on it is telling us the exact opposite. So I tried to find very specific examples of being blacklisted uh, in comics because of Comicsgate. It's really hard to find specifics. It's sort of one of those things like, everyone just agrees is the truth uh even anti comics gate people i get uh, <laughs> certain individuals in my comment section that will uh, tell me that i will never work for dc or marvel uh, because i associate with comics gate i've heard a lot of uh, twitter trolls like renfamous or sjw spider-man echo the same kinds of ideas that you're blacklisted because you're part of comics gate uh, everybody agrees that that's there's truth to that uh except publicly you know it's there there aren't articles by bleeding cool about being blacklisted because you're conservative now i did find this there's a video here being blacklisted because you're comics gate and we follow it and of course the video no longer exists so i wish i knew exactly what that was i um, probably could have figured it out if i put more effort into it but that's okay the point is it's not out there uh, if you look on Twitter and you just type in blacklisted, here I did Ethan Van Skyver blacklisted, you'll have all sorts of people that will agree that Ethan Van Skyver is blacklisted. Uh, not only that, but anybody that associates with Comicsgate gets mass, you, I mean, you get blocked by everybody on, tw not everybody, but a lot of comics creators on Twitter. Uh, you no longer have access to, to speak to comics creators because of people that you associate with. So, I, you know, I'm not naive. I went, I came into this uh, with both eyes open. I knew that I was going to be blacklisted because <laughs> everybody knows it. Uh, but it is frustrating and it makes me th realize that there needs to be something beyond Indiegogo. There need to be publishers in place that are publishing lots of books. Uh, I could start my own publishing company and, and do my own thing. And trust me, I, I think I'll, I'm going to have to. That's the way it's going to go. Uh, but I don't think that's sustainable long term. That's not the kind of change to the industry that I think needs to happen. Uh, I really, really, really hope that uh, like Splato 
uh, comics is able to pick up and provide more titles more frequently and do uh, you know really compete with the comics industry uh, same thing with all caps comics i hope that it's able to grow and compete with the with the mainstream industry uh, and i know there's a lot of other small publishers that have been started by comics gate creators but right now it's just i guess we're so early in the stage uh, I do worry, though, is Indiegogo going to be a place that's going to, going to work long term? I don't know. I, I hope I'm wrong there. I'm just trying to figure things out, I guess. So I'd love to hear what you think uh, because I'm planning on doing Indiegogo, uh, even though I feel like there are some limitations to it. I really want to hit it hard and make sure that I, I do things right and that I can have a successful campaign uh and so if you're interested in my comic downcast the mailing list has the link in the description below so join that please that'll be great and i actually down here i have a little uh i guess this is the log line for the the book i'll read it to you here and and give me feel free to give me some suggestions i'm not sure that i love exactly how this is written uh but i think it, it does pretty well when a piece of the sun falls into the hands of underclass siblings they abuse its power to bring the corrupt government of their floating city to its knees to save their father from death in prison. Downcast is a young adult adventure and feels like Death Note meets Mortal Engines. Kind of fun. I I, I uh, really love the idea. I want to get all these little marketing bits worked out well. Uh, but yeah, if this sounds like something that you might be interested in, please do join the mailing list. I promise not to spam you. Uh, but I do want to be able to measure how much interest there is in Downcast so I know how to launch successfully. So thank you very much. I'd love to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this. Uh, it's really got me thinking about the blacklist and what publishing options there are going to be in the near future. Uh, so let me know and I will see you next time.